Hey there, Touch Designer developers, Jack Delora here for the Interactive and Immersive HQ. In this video, we are going to take a look at NVIDIA Flex once again, and uh, this time push a little bit further. We're going to cover fluid emitters, which you can see on screen now, as well as adding boundaries to our world space and kind of containing that fluid within those particular boundaries. And then we're also going to look at um, creating an object or another actor for our fluid to collide with. And that's this sort of moving pink rectangle that we see on screen now. So like before, we've got a lot to cover. And uh, so let's jump right in by heading back to our network, deleting everything and starting fresh. So we're going to begin by adding an NVIDIA Flex Solver Comp. And for those of you who haven't worked with this yet, this will uh, basically allow us to have like a world space within which we'll have objects called actors, which we'll apply physics to. Um, so this is kind of our world that we're setting up. The first thing we're gonna do here is actually tell our Flex Solver to look for the actors within this comp. So I'm going to change the actors parameter to read dot forward slash asterisk and then hit enter. And then before we move on, I also am going to split my screen so that we can get a kind of overview of what we're working on as we add more stuff to our network. So I'm gonna add an additional pane and then open up the geometry viewer on the right and reduce the scale of that. Cool, so then we'll head within our flex solver and add our first actor. So that, again, this is the object that we are adding or uh, applying physics to. In this case, this is gonna be our fluid emitter and then later on we're gonna add a second actor which is going to be that pink box that um, allows our fluid to have something to collide with. So first of all, we need a SOP to define the collision shape. So I'm gonna head inside the actor and add a sphere SOP. So within the, or within the sphere SOPs parameters, let's set the primitive type here to polygon. Then we'll reduce the radius to a value of 0 0.2. And then we'll come to the detail page and reduce the frequency to one. Finally, I'm just gonna turn on the render and display flags and head back up a level. Now, I forgot to also turn on the display flag for our flex solver, which would allow us to see that in the geometry viewer on the right. So make sure you've done that as well. Um, so let's take a look at our actor for a moment. We're not gonna do anything on this main general page, but if we come to the flex page, we can change our flex type here from fluid to fluid emitter, which will then enable us to have that kind of fluid emission sort of effect that we saw at the beginning of the video. So from there, if we then were to head back up a level, initialize our simulation and start our simulation, we should see that we are now emitting a bunch of these spheres and they're kind of just falling infinitely in space because we have a gravitational acceleration being applied right now. Um, but the first thing I'm gonna do before we kind of move on and fine tune the actor settings, I'm going to add some boundaries so that these uh, particles or this fluid doesn't just kind of fall infinitely downwards. So first thing I'm gonna do is hit initialize and then we will add what's called a boundary. So in the kind of bottom half of our parameters here we see this parameter called enable boundaries. We're gonna turn that on and we'll see that we then have two more options appear. So we've got our boundary mode, which can be set to bounding box or planes. So in this case, we're just gonna use the ability to use a SOP as our bounding box instead of having to set up these planes individually. So I'm going to add a box SOP above that and then I'll drag that box SOP into our bounding box SOP parameter. If I was then to hit initialize and start simulation, we can see that our particles, if we zoom in on them, are all kind of stuck within this very small amount of space. And that's actually because our box is very small. If we were to turn the display flag on here, you can see that, there we go. It's very, very small at the moment. So if we then start our simulation again and increase the scale here to 20 and then hit initialize and start on the simulation, what we should now see is that our particles, or our fluid rather, is being emitted and 
is being contained by that box. So currently we're only um, emitting particles and are kind of in this ideal state of physics where things are just kind of falling in this single uh, kind of axis. At the moment, we are going to apply some changes to change that in a second, but um, at least we have those kind of boundaries set up and ready to roll. So let's head back in the Flex Solver and make some changes to our actor to kind of change how this is looking. So first of all, uh, on the Flex page, we have this thing called emission size, and this is the size of a two-dimensional grid from which the particles are emitted. So if we increase this to a value of three, what we can see is that our kind of one-dimensional or two-dimensional axis, I guess, has been increased. And now we have this uh, kind of dispersion of particles throughout space. So that's cool. That's looking better. Um, and one thing that we're also going to do here is you can see that our kind of emission at the moment is looking a little bit lopsided. So more particles are coming out in one direction than another. And that's actually because by default, our emitter is kind of aligned to this Z axis. So if we were to increase this emission speed to something like five, we can see that the particles are being emitted along that axis in that kind of direction. And I actually want the particles to be emitted upwards so that they kind of like fall in all directions evenly and don't kind of have this bias towards this one direction. So I'm gonna turn this emission speed to zero and then I'm gonna to come to the transform page and we're going to rotate this emitter on the X axis. So I'm gonna change my rotation 90 degrees on the X axis. And what we should see then is that we get a little bit more of an even distribution of particle emission or fluid emission rather. Um, from there, I'm actually also going to translate this emitter up in space. So I'm gonna move it five up in the Y axis. And you can see then that we have a little bit more um, room for those particles to fall and for our eventual second actor to uh, have something for those particles or that fluid rather to collide with. Um, so now that we've got those things set up, we might as well add a, um, a material to this so that we can add some color. So I'm going to head to the mat page and grab a fong. Now, just like a geometry comp, we can apply materials to our actor. So I'm just gonna drag the fong onto our actor one. I'll set that as the parameter material. And then within the fong, we'll change the color of our diffuse parameter here to 0.2 in the red channel, 0.4 in the green channel, and we'll leave the blue channel at 0.7. Cool, so we've got that all set up. We have blue, a blue fluid being emitted with a bunch of different particles. And uh, one thing that I'm realizing that we forgot to change here, if we head back into our actor, is we can actually increase the total number of particles or uh, max emission particles is a parameter that we have access to that allows us to increase the total number of particles that we're generating. In the version we saw at the beginning, we were actually emitting a lot more particles than we see now. We set our uh, max emission particles for that example to 50,000 instead of 5,000. Since the flex solver is all GPU based, we can actually handle a, a really large number of particles in this case. Um, so just bump that up to 50,000. Cool, so that is our kind of general setup for our fluid emitter. Um, and now we can actually work on setting up our, um, our collision shape. So one other thing I'm gonna do here just to make sure that we've got all of our settings applied to what we see on screen is make sure to initialize and start that simulation again, just so that it updates with those settings that we have. Cool, so then if we come into our NVIDIA Flex Solver again and add a second actor, we can work on that collision shape. So again, we need a SOP. Uh, so I'm gonna grab, in this case, a box SOP. And first of all, we'll turn on the render and display flags and you can now see that appearing on screen. And then we're also going to 
modify the size of this box before we move on. So I'm gonna set my X size parameter to eight, the Y size parameter to 0 0.5, and the Z size parameter to three to give us that sort of like tabletop or flat uh, surface that we saw at the beginning. Cool, we're all set there. We can head back up a level and initialize our actor to get rid of that error. Now, uh, we don't want to apply physics to this object, so we're going to change it from this kinematic state of dynamic finite mass to static infinite mass. And that will just allow us to kind of have it sit in our world space without um, applying physics to it and having it kind of fall to the floor of our boundary box like our particles or our fluid is. Um, after that, we can set our collision shape to concave, doesn't really matter. Um, you can leave it at the default as well. And then on the transform page, we're also going to translate this uh, down in space so that it's a little bit lower in our kind of world space. Cool, so nothing is happening at the moment. The particles are just kind of falling right through that object. So if we come back up a level and hit initialize and then start simulation, what we should see is that the particles start kind of collecting on the object itself, uh, which is a little bit weird and not really the ideal kind of situation that we saw at the beginning where they were kind of uh, being dispersed and colliding with the shape. You can see a couple of them are doing that, but a lot of them are just kind of collecting in, on that bottom surface. So we have a setting within the NVIDIA Flex Solver properties called collision distance. And if I just pull up the wiki here, the definition of that is the distance particles maintain when colliding against shapes. So in this case, we need to increase that setting to avoid the situation where the particles get stuck to our uh, rectangle or our box stop that we set up a moment ago. So what I'm gonna do here is actually increase that collision distance to 0 0.2. And then we should see that the particles then kind of work as we would expect. They collide with the box and then are kind of kind of move off the edge of the box and none of them stick to it like in that initial kind of setting. So cool, we've got that set up. Now to add some movement to that box and um, also some color, we're gonna head back into the Flex Solver and I guess we'll start with the color because it's pretty straightforward. We're just gonna add a second Fong mat and then again, we'll drag that onto the actor to comp in this case, hit parameter material. And then within the diffuse color setting, I'm gonna set the uh, red channel to 0 0.75, the green channel to 0 0.25, and our uh, blue channel to 0 0.65. Now we should have a pink uh, kind of slab in the middle of our screen. Finally, we're just going to use a simple LFO chop to move that position of our actor. So I'm just gonna grab the LFO chop and place that above. And then I'm going to, first of all, change the frequency here to 0 0.125. So it's not moving so rapidly. And then I'll set the amplitude to six. Um, and then once we've done that, we can actually head to the transform page and we want this to move along the Z axis. So it kind of moves back and forth throughout space. So I'm just gonna make a chop reference to the translate Z parameter from that channel. And what we can see now is that we have that pink uh, plane moving through space and the particles of our fluid emitter are correctly kind of colliding with that shape. And that is actually it to uh, recreate the exact same effect that we saw at the beginning. So that's it for this video. Hopefully that gave you an idea of how you can start working with the Flex Solver Comp to create these kind of fluid emission simulations, as well as how you can introduce additional actors to provide objects for that fluid simulation to collide with. So with that, thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next video here on the Interactive and Immersive HQ. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you're serious about taking your touch designer and interactive skills to the next level, I highly recommend you check out the Interactive and Immersive HQ Pro. It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for touch designer and interactive professionals. You can learn more by checking out the link in the description. 
And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and the little bell icon for more awesome free content.